We're joined by Professor Janusz Jankowski from NICE, the government organisation in the UK which is advising on optimal care and optimal care pathways. Professor, esophageal disease, just how important is it in day-to-day -day practice? Enormously important. It's arguable that esophageal disease is the commonest condition affecting adults in the West. And if you look at to recent epidemiology, it's increasing in the East as well. Approximately 40% of adults throughout the world will have some form of esophageal disease. So that's the morbidity of it. If you look at the mortality, there's some really nasty cancers that can develop in esophageal disease, which put them in the top 5% of really bad cancers. And how well is it managed in daily practice? Oh, I think probably mediocre to say the best. And the reason for that is, is that sometimes we don't prescribe the right treatment at the right time, and at other times we give lots of therapy that doesn't have any effects at all, or may very well have some side effects. And what's the biggest issue preventing better outcomes? The biggest issue is knowledge and information about complex clinical conditions. Everybody's looking for a magic bullet in esophageal disease, and the sad reality is we only have one for the GI tract, which is Helicobacter pylori. We can give you three different tablets, it's 140 tablets over 10 or 12 days that can treat it. Everything else is very complex, so we need complex trials to be able to understand what can be managed. So the disease is complex, we need to understand that, but at the end of the day, there are a few interventions that we can do, and if they're timed right, they could make a big difference. What are those interventions? The interventions are appropriate diagnostic intervention in the way of endoscopy with a specialist who's adequately trained, followed on to some specialist tests. Some patients need acid suppression therapy it could be given judiciously and reviewed. Not everybody needs to stay on it. Some lifetime and lifestyle changes can make a difference. There's also some evidence now that in the longer term, endoscopic intervention for the pre-malignant stages of esophageal cancer can actually get, stop you getting the cancer at all. So that might be endoscopic uh, ablation therapy or endoscopic mucosin resection therapy. And last of all, there's some very exciting data that suggests that low-dose aspirin combined with high-dose acid-suppressing drugs could actually decrease the mortality for our highest-risk patients who have Barrett's esophagus who may go on to cancer. And how hopeful are you about the future of the management of these diseases? Oh, I'm very hopeful. The big issue here is that Gastroenterologists can't work in their single centres or the regions or within our own country. They need to work in multinational studies. What we need is large, complex studies to look at all the nature and nurture factors that give esophageal disease. Because we understand some aspects of the genetics and genomics, the things that predispose to that. We understand some aspects about the environment, about food, about drinking, smoking, obesity. And actually, when you put them all together, it's very complex. So we need to understand what are the two or three simple things that we could do right now that could make a difference rather than worrying about the things 10 years down the line. And one of the problems in medicine is often that people operate in silos. Exactly. It doesn't sound like this is a disease that can be managed in that way. Exactly. That the, the organisation I currently work for, which is the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, is an organisation based in the UK, but it works on a global basis. We look at the evidence base from all around the world, and we have an exceptionally rigorous methodology of looking at that. And I can tell you they are currently looking at the area of esophageal disease and are updating the guidance that we're giving to do that. And some of the evidence suggests that, in fact, despite all our concerns about acid suppression drugs, about some of the side effects they could have, is if you give them an adequate dose to the right high-risk patients, it could actually save lives. So the future is really hopeful? Oh, exceptionally. This is a preventable problem.